The Layout Objects feature in FileMaker 16 is like a report when sorted by object layering. With layouts getting more complicated these days, not only in terms of the quantity of objects, but also the layering, the Layout Objects palette simplifies the WYSIWYG interface you see in layout mode in FileMaker 15 and earlier by displaying it in a linear fashion, much like a report. It's ordered by layers. So you can look at things in order of layering, and then you can go ahead and search it, click on it, hide other objects. Well, we'll get onto all that stuff. It's really a cool tool that will take complicated layouts and make them easier to work with. But let's start by demoing the calendar. That's what we're going to use because I thought this was the best solution to show you how this object layering window works. So I've got a calendar here that shows you all the days of the month. And you can see that it's quite complicated in all the highlighting. If you click on here, popovers come up. You might put in wedding anniversary and type that in there. Then we'll go ahead and select that. You might on your wedding anniversary for that particular one because that was a you know an annual event. But on that day, you might say, okay, pick up gift at jeweler. And I won't put any times or anything like that, but you could, of course. And you could come in here and say, uh, make dinner, something like that. All these things can be entered in there. And you can see how all these things are highlighting. You can see the current day highlights, and then this is on top of that. And, and all these things, it's really complicated. And all these layers make it difficult to work with it in layout mode, especially when it's done 40 time, 42 times over. You can see there's one day for every possibility here. So all this stuff works in conjunction by layering it, but what you want to do is make one day and then duplicate the rest to make the modifications. Inevitably, what happens is you find out you made a mistake and you have to go ahead and redo it, and you don't want to go to every object and do it. Sometimes you delete all the objects and then come back and work on just one of them, duplicate them again, or maybe you try to go ahead and say, okay, I can work on each one individually and change that little change. But it, it gets, ends up being an endless process, and this tool can make it so much easier. Let's go into layout mode and take a look. And what we're going to do first here is take one of the days, highlight it, and then we'll duplicate it. Pull it over here into the gray area and just pull it apart so you can see the complexity. So oh, there's actually two portals here. So you'll see those eventually. We're going to take some pieces out of here. Keep pulling them out. And I think we've got all of them there. Nope, there's one more. You can see that there's all these pieces in there. There are fields and buttons and button bars and, and different things. They have conditional formatting and hiding and not, and all these things working together. And then you have this portal down here, which has multiple rows showing, whereas the portal up here did, and I believe this is actually the portal here. You can see it has one row, but it's the initial row seven. This one over here would be initial row six and so on. You can see how there's slight changes made here. But you can see we can pull this apart as well. You can see there's quite a few pieces here as well. And I think I got them all, and there might be a piece back there. Yeah, there's a piece behind the portal even. So it gets to be quite cumbersome to work with. Now I'm going to get rid of these. There we go. In fact, you can even see my note up here if you're looking. Uh, you know, it talks about layering. Well, I, I designed the solution in FileMaker 15, not 16. And so I wrote this note to warn people, look, it's really difficult to work with this because I give the full access password and you purchase it. But now with the uh, object layering, uh, the layout objects window, uh, the palette I would rather call it, it makes it much easier to work with this stuff. So let's show it. I'm going to go ahead and click on it here to show it. And you'll see that we have this list, and it goes in order of layering. Okay, so if we come over here and unlock this, right, and then send it backward, it should go back down, and you can see it moves down, and the list is now back there. I'm going to pull it back to the front here. And you'll see, because there's a lot of objects. I mean, look at all these objects. It's just incredible how much are here. So working with it can be, you know, you really have to know the system intimately. But if you know a little bit about how it works, you can make it much easier for yourself. For instance, I'm 
got some of these things uh, named, and they weren't for this feature, the you know the layout objects window. They were really for the scripts that to make them adaptive, and I had to name them to make them work on each uh, you know uh, individual day. So you can see that I can go ahead and expand and see what's inside these things. For instance, there's a portal, right? What happens when I click on it? Well, you can see it highlights that portal right there, right? It's that one row portal over there. And then I can see things inside of it, right? You can see these are uh, things inside of it right here, like the popover button. Now, that's not the actual thing that will display the popover. There's something inside of it. You can see how you can get down and select objects that are layered on top of each other and just click on them. You can just go and say, okay, I want, you know, I'm inside annual one. Okay, that's grouped all these objects together. And I can see all the things that are going on inside there and look at each piece individually rather than having to pull it over to the side, try to put it together again after I've uh, worked with it. It can be really cumbersome. And, and I can tell you right now, if I just come over here and click on something, it'll find it for me over here. I can click on anything I want. I can even come over here and shift or drag select things. And you can see all of them are highlighted now. I can then go ahead and say, OK, I want to go ahead and hide all the other objects. So I can come over here and right mouse click or control click and hide all other objects. And now I just have that one showing. Come up here, I can come and show all the objects again. So let me do that again. That's pretty cool stuff. I can hide everything. Well, actually, I control click that and that hid everything but what was uh, selected. And I didn't even know that existed. So I'll just leave that in the video. That's pretty cool. Come back up here, do that. I'll control click over here, hide all other objects. And now I'm just working with that one portal and nothing gets in my way. If I go to browse mode, it's all still there, right? Nothing's gone. It's only in layout mode that I've hidden them. So I can come in here and show them back again, no problem. I can do that to my heart's content. Now, that's pretty cool. You can do some great stuff with that. You can go and get into an object that you want to. For instance, if I have these selected, I can say, OK, well, that's the thing I want to get into. Let's see, OK, time view. OK, that's the one I want to get into, right? It's right there. And I, if I click over here, you notice I can't get to it, right? There's something on top of it, the name view. But if I go and find the time view, I can click on it and then come over here and or control click on it, you know, do some conditional formatting, set script triggers, specify the object name. In fact, you can specify the object name just by clicking and holding down and typing there. Pretty cool stuff. You can get to that object even though you can't click on it. But now that you've clicked on it here, it's selected over here as well. Now you can do anything you want. You can go ahead and hide everything else. You can do anything from the menus up here that are not available in the context sensitive menus over here. I can go ahead and tell it to hide everything else. You see it does that. Now it keeps the, the portal on there so that it keeps the, it inside that object. You want to keep it inside that object and still shows that. But you can get to this. You can see that I can double click on it now and change it to time end if I want to or some other new field. I mean, the power is incredible getting into those layers. And uh, it kind of reminds me of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I don't know if anybody else watches that. But they have this 3D hologram computer that allows you to explode these rendered objects of whatever kind of object they've rendered with the computer and their lasers and things like that. And they just, with the flick of the wrist, they can toss things around and do stuff and work with it. And that's what it feels like this tool is. I mean, it's not quite as sophisticated, uh, but it's real here. You can actually use this. So I think what you're going to find out is that everybody's going to use this tool just a little bit differently because everybody has a different solution out there. But you want to get familiar with this. In fact, you might want to start naming your objects. Watch what happens when I type in 07. Now what I've got here now at this point is three objects, the two portals and that object that was behind the portal. It's a it's a button bar that highlights the current current day. So I've got all three of these highlighted just by typing in 07 there because I have good naming conventions. Everything has 07 in there. So I could type in 06 or 05 and bring up just those objects really quickly with the search parameter here. And you really can go in anywhere. You can show just the fields if you want to. That might help you enough, even if you don't have good naming conventions. You could just go ahead and say, show me all the fields. Or you could type in colon, colon, time, right? Time underscore start. And what we're going to see is there's a start. There's a start. We can go to the right one based on what event it's in, right? Find the right one and start working with it. All kinds of things can be accomplished with this. What you have to do is fiddle around with it. Become familiar with it. Find out what you can do. You know, realize there's a control or right click here where you can hide all other objects, hide objects in front, hide them in front and back, uh, all these things. And each 
you know, kind of object's going to have different choices down here. Some won't have conditional format if you can't add it. Whereas if we come down here and control click on this one, it's got the same options. Let's see what we can do here. We'll go to this one right here. You can see it doesn't have the ability to do conditional formatting on it. So everything is different. The more you use it, the better you're going to get at manipulating your layouts and doing a better job at you know being efficient as a developer. That's really the key there. And I think this tool really makes you efficient by making this report-like interface to this you know WYSIWYG layout mode. And you know you take that approach. Sometimes you're going to edit stuff in layout mode, just the normal traditional way. Sometimes you're going to pull up you know your layout object window and uh, work with it that way. It all depends on which tool works better. So study it. I think this is going to be a powerful tool for the future.